Teach AI is, look, an initiative dedicated to helping educators teach with AI about AI. But Hardy, how much already is AI teaching kids instead of teachers? I don't know about AI teaching kids instead of teachers, but what every parent, every school student and teacher recognizes is that since the moment that ChatGPT and these chatbots came out, kids are wondering, can I use this for homework? Teachers are wondering, how do I need to adjust my classroom now that this technology is out there? And you know, one of the best questions, when I show this to my kids, mm -hmm. he also asked, am I allowed to use this for school? But then he also asked, what's the point of school if this can do all this stuff? Well, precisely. Uh, right. And so these are questions that nobody has firm answers to. And part of the issue is that the technology creators aren't saying how schools should be using it. And school leaders are just receiving this technology is coming out wondering how do we react and it's moving so fast. The goal of Teach AI is to bring together tech leaders such as OpenAI, Microsoft and Amazon who are creating these technologies together with education leaders such as Code.org, Khan Academy, the College Board and then global education leaders all across this country and on all six continents to answer these questions about how should education evolve for an age of AI. And I mean, will this erode many a business model? You're currently looking at incorporating AI curriculum, you say, and tools into your platform to reach 150 million students by 2030. But what is education? Prophesize for us. What is education going to look like by 2030? Will they really be using online tools? Well, one thing I could say is the current education system we use where students spend most of their time reading in books and sort of filling their heads with knowledge from books was designed based on the invention of the printing press 600 years ago. And so we need to th rethink how we do education in a time when information is available at your fingertips and AI can synthesize and, and create for you. And so our goal isn't just to get students who know how to memorize a lot of information and practice repetitive rote tasks, but helping students become creators and problem solvers using AI as a superpower. Yeah, are you on the side that AI augments? rather than competes against? Or are you already thinking, wow, education is going to have to so pivot because the job market is going to so have to pivot? I think both of those are, are true. AI absolutely augments, but we need to teach students not just the skills of the past, but also the skills of the future. Every workplace is asking its, its workers, figure out how this can make you more productive. Whereas today, many schools are banning AI because it's considered mm. cheating. The, the cheating that people are trying to stop in schools is what employers want their employees to do. They're like, oh, if this makes you work faster, please do it, if it, if it reduces the time spent on any kind of task. Hadi, does Code.org, good morning, by the way, have any sort of granular insight into how students, either at the high school level or college level, are actually using generative AI tools? Uh, this, how they're using it, it's much broader than what Code.org sees. And, Honestly, the best way to see that is what is listening to parents, students, and teachers. Uh, and it's much more anecdotal. You know, for, as one example, my neighbor's daughter just got an F on a homework assignment because the teacher accused her of using ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. And she's insisting, I didn't use it, I wrote it myself. Uh, and that's a kind of story that's happening all around the world. Uh, it's not easy to keep track of because, first of all, students, when they use these tools, they use them at home and they also know to change up the writing and to personalize it as well. Uh, but the real issue we need to talk about is not to view using of new technology as cheating, but to figure out how do we move the goalposts of education, how do we teach creativity, communication skills, problem solving skills, and technological fluency so students learn the stuff that we want them to learn, including how to use these tools to be more productive. So in Chegg's case, their shares are, are plunging because they gave evidence that their offering is being displaced by ChatGPT. It's a free service, principally, that anyone can access as long as they, they get past the wait list. Is that what you're seeing, that generative AI tools are displacing traditional online education tools? What's definitely true is that tools like ChatGPT can help a student do almost all of what their current homework looks like today. And so once that's out there, Students wonder, can I use this for my homework? And of course, teachers, classrooms, schools wonder, how do we change what homework is? Because what's the point if a student just plugs it in and gets an answer and doesn't actually use their heads and their brains very much? And so there's gonna be great disruption within education technology and also in classrooms 
as we rethink not only the tools for education, but even how teaching is done and even the purpose of education. You've been in the for-profit side, starting your career at Microsoft and other tech giants, and then when you're now in a non-profit focus, how much are you talking with government? How much are you thinking about the ethical repercussions of where artificial intelligence is leading us, whether it be from children, whether it be more broadly about the way in which we use it as humankind and what it ultimately means for all of us and our productivity? That is a fantastic question. It's the purpose of what we're announcing today with Teach AI, which is to bring together for-profit and private corporate leaders, basically the technology creators, with the education leaders, many of which are basically governments, to have this dialogue to figure out how to safely and ethically and equitably integrate AI And in not put it back in its box. You don't right. think we should slow down Yeah, there's two the extremes, which is just release the technology, see what happens, and the other extreme is ban it, slow it down, stop it. The middle ground is to figure out how do we use it and harness it, but with safety and, and ethics as part of that conversation. And that's why we're bringing together not only tech leaders and education leaders, but government leaders. There's numerous ministries from around the world, ministries of education that are participating in this work because they want to basically be at the forefront of how we change education.